Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Marcus Shadow. Welcome to Around the Pound, the monthly show from the X-Pound, where we talk all about all kinds of crazy crap. Joining me today, we have the boss man himself, Mr. James Phoenix. Yellow. We have the number two man, Chris, a.k.a. The Mole. And hello. We have my number one, the sad gamer, Richter Hammer. <laughs> number one. That's right. We have, from the gaming grotto, Geeky Girl herself. Hey there! I guess I don't get a number, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the inevitable black reviewer, QJ. From, Coyote, from upcoming Coyote Media. Yes. That's right. The is silent. I give him 15. <laughs> And here you go, you wanted a number, Stacey, you're our number one female reviewer. QJ, you're our number one unaired viewer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So, let's start, I suppose, with the reviews. So, who wants to go first? Okay, I can go first. Go for it. Um, uh, this month, I will be reviewing a movie called 500 Mile an Hour Storm. It uh, looks like one of those sci-fi bad movie of the weeks, and yeah, it's, it's pretty terrible. Uh, it starts off with uh, there's some uh, station that's supposed to supply power or something and somehow creates a massive storms and all this other kind of crazy crap all over the world. And uh, I, I can't say that it's implausible because they never explain how the facility works, so you can't say it's wrong because... It's, I guess it's magic. I don't know. But improbably, it just starts cr causing mayhem. It's definitely one of those uh, really bad disaster movies. And uh, there's there's lots of flubs in it. There's parts where you can see the special effects go away. There's bad special effects. There's uh, the part where you can see wires on people. Like, it's it's all in all pretty bad. Uh, I would, uh, basically, uh, my wife and I saw it on what we dub uh, Bad Movie Night where every weekend we try to see a bad movie. So it filled that role perfectly. And uh, I would definitely not recommend seeing it. Maybe if you're in a mood to laugh at just how terrible it is. I mean, a guy dies by steam. Like it just, it kind of like blows him in the face and he just dies. Like he's not even that badly burned. That's just how terrible this movie is that the guy must have faked his own death just to get out of it. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend seeing it. And that's it for me. All right, thanks, Richter. Let's go on over to QJ. Okay, so today I will be uh, reviewing um, the first season of Breaking Bad, which is a show on AMC. Um, basically, um, it's about this guy. His name is Walter White. He's a uh, chemistry teacher, and um, he a high school teacher, a chemistry teacher, and so basically he's. Um, he has a loving wife and uh, he has a son who has cerebral palsy. Uh, the actor who plays him actually does have cerebral, cerebral palsy, but he's, um, he has a mild form of it. So they, um, uh, it's really interesting for them to use a character like that. He's one of my favorite characters too. And um, basically uh, he, uh, he, he's diagnosed with cancer. Uh, I think it was, it's lung cancer. I think they said it's stage four. And, um, a 3A, actually. And uh, so basically it means he's going to die within a few years. He doesn't have very long to live. And um, essentially, he, uh, the way that it plays out, he has a uh, brother-in-law who's a DEA agent. And then he finds out that um, they bagged a shit ton of money uh, for, their, um, for a bust, a meth bust they uh, did. So he has to go on a ride along, which is where you get to ride along with the DEA agent while they uh, go crack on some um, some big meth heads and uh, big meth labs and stuff like that. So he goes, and um, while uh, the guys are going in to uh, breach the meth lab, they uh, one of his uh, former students, uh, Jesse Pinkman, is seen uh, fleeing from the scene. And uh, so later, Walter goes to confront him, and it seems like he's, he's going to confront him so he can, you know, talk him out of that lifestyle, but uh, unexpectedly, he ends up asking him to partner up as a uh, meth dealer, and uh, much to his surprise, um, they end up 
partnering up and and coming together. You find out over uh, later. I mean, like they usually tell you from this premise alone, but you find out that basically he's trying to. He knows that he's the only thing keeping his family afloat. Um, he's working as a uh, doc or as a um, teacher, and he's also got a job at a wa- um, car wash. So he's working two jobs to keep his family afloat, and they're doing well, but he knows that with the cancer and, and the medication that's going to come with it, his family's going to be in financial tor- turmoil uh, by the time that he dies. So he wants to secure their financial uh, problems by having the money already, and he's doing so by selling meth. And this uh, creates an interesting dynamic because before he was a um, high school student uh, teacher, he was... Uh, one of the most premier chemistry teachers, and he's kind of humbled by the fact that uh, the majority of his colleagues were all um, chemistry like geniuses, and they're they're like millionaire scientists now. And he's just teaching a uh, the heck? okay, and he's just teaching a um, a uh, high school now. So he he but he uses his chemistry knowledge to great use because he's able to create quality meth that they can sell for a high uh high price so um basically i think it's really interesting how they use his chemistry dynamic because it not only does he use his chemistry to create meth he uses it to get them out of tight situations like for example there's a situation where jesse gets beaten up by uh one of these crazy uh distributor guys who's uh like kind of a mobster and then he goes up into the place with this crystal-like stuff and throws it on the ground and causes a, a pretty m- uh, mild explosion, but it knocks them off their feet, and then he threatens to throw the entire bag of crystals on the ground if, it, if they don't comply and kill them all. And uh, th- there's um, a scene where he uses, you know those um, uh, red uh, things they had them in Toy Story where you use the white knobs to create pictures and then you shake it and then it disappears as like a Etch great a sketch Etch a sketch yeah he uses these like faux ex- exit sketches things and uh he opens them up and takes the thermite out of it and put it puts it in a bag and explains that thermite when ignited can burn through like four inches of solid steel and they use it to break into a warehouse uh to get some more supplies for their meth so uh he really uses his chemistry his chemistry knowledge to use in almost like a Batman kind of quality. And um, the, the character, uh, the actor who plays him, Brian Cranston, really does an amazing job because uh, the whole point of the show, it's called Breaking Bad because it's he's he's a nice guy. He's like a mild-mannered kind of character who's, who's uh, breaking into the bad lifestyle, so to speak. So um, the, his character is awesome, uh, very... Uh, you get to see that he's really in over his head over a while, but, uh, but um, the show does a really good job of want, making you want to, especially the first season, making you want to watch it more and more because you know that it's about his evolution into this mild-mannered high school teacher, into this uh, Scarface-like kingpin, which if you've seen the previews from season five, they it, he really has taken on that persona completely. And it's really interesting to see that kind of character evolve in that kind of way in, over time in such a, uh, a long period of time. And um, uh, all in all, I give it a 10 out of 10. Uh, definitely go check this out if you are a fan of stuff like Scarface or, or uh, Goodfellas and just crime dramas in general. Uh, and also check it out if you're like a fan of superhero dramas because it's it's got that kind of vibe. You have a mild mannered guy who uses his skills to get himself in, in, into these crazy situations, but he ends up using his head to get out of it. And then the evolution into an entirely different person is pretty much just as authentic as something you would see in a, a superhero film. So, yeah, definitely go check this out. It's a very good show. Very well written and very well executed. That's it. Thank you very much, QJ. It was mm-hmm. interesting. Um, yeah. it's a sh- Breaking Bad is a show I've always wanted to check out, so cool. Definitely. Uh, let's head on over to Chris the Mole. What have you been doing this month, my friend? Okay, this month, mostly playing a shit ton of games, but <laughs> and let's see, I've been playing the shit from Resident Evil to Mario Sport, obviously Defiance, awesome MMO, which I'll talk about first awesome fucking game 
so cool. I sat down with a friend of mine, as you all know, the Crispy, put him on there. He doesn't buy too many games. He's, I mean, he buys some, but they're normally ones he's familiar with, like franchises and stuff. He sat down. He played that for about five minutes. I was like, holy crap, everything just works. And he went out and bought it the next day. And we spent <laughs> most of the day, ironically, we spent most of the day playing it. Wow. Well, well, most of tonight, I should say, from about 10 o'clock at night till about just before we all started. You're talking about Defiance? Yep. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Defiance, the MMO. Kicks ass. Uh, we got the God of Warfare. I got the God of War Ascension and stuff like that. Which, they're, they're all cool, and of course I was excited about all the new Sonic news that debuted this month. More on that on XGR, <laughs> assuming this is up before that. But yeah, <laughs> and basically, uh, I've also got really into heavily, I don't know about you guys, have any of you got into like the online stuff that Amazon's been doing recently? Mm, no, what are you talking about? Not really. I, Amazon, and it's free, you can go and check them out now on Amazon.com. 14 new pilots. They they put 14 new pilots, which were like 8 comedies and 6 children's shows and stuff like that. And out of these 14 so far, Alpha House has been picked up, which I believe that that's stars like John Goodman as this like lawyer person who's... We're not lawyer person... You know, like a congressman type thing. It's like the Alpha House of Congress with all the cool people hanging out. And then you have and Betas as well. That's been picked up. Sadly, my favorite does my favorite one, which was Zombieland, not picked up. And yes, I have watched. Ah. I have watched a lot of these. <laughs> Wait, Zombieland. I've, Zombieland didn't get picked up. No, Zombieland sadly did not get picked up, which is a shame because oh. I like I like that I like that TV show, that pilot. It was awesome. There, yeah. there's those who can't, which seems very much like a US version of our show Teachers, which you'll know as that funny British comedy starring that guy from Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> but I, they also had the Onion News Network, which was fucking hilarious. They've there's loads. I'm not like I'm not going through all of them. I'm going through my favorites, but there's only news and one which I really did love called Browsers, which is a comedy about these people that go to work in like a newspaper play magazine place where or web page where they specialize in online news. Like oh, this is the latest of the trend thanks to YouTube and stuff like that. And they have to browse for. However, the entire thing is done as a musical, and. <laughs> Stars the actress who played Lilith in Cheers and Frasier as the boss, who has a big uh, musical number in the first episode about how you don't fuck with her. Literally, that's the song. You don't. I'm not. I'm not a person with whom you to fuck. And it's like that's <laughs> fucking awesome. It's so wacky, oddball, and just fucking out there that the concept just. It's a concept that shouldn't work, but yet it kind of does. Like, there was one song on there which was fucking hilarious from the guy where he's like the Twitter master and he talks about, oh yeah, I can assassinate you in 140 characters or less. And, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, it's fucking awesome. So yeah, basically that's pretty much the most of the things I've been doing this month, but I really wanted to talk about the Amazon pilot things which everyone should totally check out it's interesting a lot of shit comes from that and of course with the games spent an entire most of this month playing through dragon age origins awakening witch hunt dragon age 2 and of course i'm playing through dragon age 2 again right now but yeah. so yeah that, that was my month you, you mentioned uh you mentioned god war ascension yeah, i did oh uh, how was that have you uh, Honestly, it, yeah. Honestly, I like it. I haven't beat them. I haven't beat the single player yet, but so far it feels like a God of War. The controls are a little different, but it feels like a God of War. It's fucking awesome to play the single player. Multiplayer? Right. Eh. It's literally just go online and prove your EP by using swords and shit to try and kill each other. Which means if ah. you, it's basically the first one to get there and spam the shit out the control pad wins. <laughs> Oh, okay, so it that sucks. makes sense. It sucks, but it has promise. Ah. I mean, no, I mean, not all the multiplayer was bad. I mean, there is some elements which are good, but yeah. Overall, the single player, obviously, with a God of War, is the part you want, and they've done the single player right. So, woo! Good. Good. Woo! 
Ooh. Is it? Um, <gasps> do you know if it's uh, canons or the uh, the the PSP ones? Because I know the PSP ones had pretty much the same premise or of like taking place before or after uh, yeah. Ares fucked them over, and I, I wasn't sure how they were gonna do that if it was gonna be like pretty much in that same. Time frame. Uh, yes, because I believe the oh. PSP ones, that's why they brought them out on the PS3 as a collection, is uh, the ones that are prequel, the way the PSP ones and stuff are, is yeah, they're prequels, but this one seems to be a prequel to the prequels. Oh. Uh, I know, okay. it's like, this is like Star Wars Episode Minus One territory right here. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay. still, uh, the premise, I didn't like the premise of it being a prequel, especially because he feels so fucking godlike already, but hey. Uh, it worked. However, okay. yeah, it's canon with the PSP stuff. That, that's good that it, it still works, because, I mean, to have that epic nature of uh, God of War 3 and then have Ascension take place before all of that, I, I would feel like it would be pretty difficult to um, to live up to that, really. See, I, I'll disagree with that. So far, I'm preferring God of War Ascension to God of War 3. I know some people oh, okay. go oh, to that. I didn't really like God of War 3 because I completed the entire game in like four hours, five hours or something like that. A couple of hours less than what I had the other ones because it felt like more of God of War 3 was just showing off the PS3's graphics of, oh, look, a giant fucking cutscene. Right, uh, yeah. Uh, like one stage, giant fucking cutscene. It was almost Meta Gear Solid 4 levels of cutscene <laughs> However, the cutscenes were epic and fucking yes. Good, yeah. Because Metal Gear Solid can get tedious sometimes. I mean, by the fourth one, it was like 30-minute cutscenes, and it was like, oh, come on. <laughs> yep. Just make a movie already. <laughs> right? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, though, if you want, if you want epicness like that in a game, you need to play God of War. You know, you need to play Dragon Age Origins, which. I know Geeky Girl has, so I shall turn it over to her for this month. Okay, well, I haven't played Dragon Age um, 2 yet, because what I did was I re kind of restarted my file in a little bit because I'm in the romance with Alistair, but see, I apparently chose the elf, and he has a thing against elves, so he can't marry an elf, so instantly I can either A, be his mistress, or be completely dumb. So I, de um, so I decided to you know, make him not king and make the um, girl queen. So, but I had to re um, redo it a little bit, so that put me a little bit behind. See, what you need is the Rosa Park of elves. That'll change things. <laughs> Zach <laughs> hates elves, apparently. And racist elves. But, well, only if he's king, though. If he's not king, then he, he, elves are okay. We may have pointy ears, but we still have feelings. Pro protest march! Protest march! <laughs> yeah. So, I've been playing a lot of that. I'm, I'm on the last battle, and I've been doing the same goddamn fight for freaking um, ever. When I was playing it, like, freaking half hour ago. And, um, yeah. So, you know, I'm not casual. So, either I really suck, which I don't doubt, but it's also really hard. Um, uh, so, yeah. Other games I've been playing is pretty much game dev, which is, like, addicting as all hell. Like, making your own freaking uh, game developer. Um, develop your own games and stuff and you get to go with bigger office more money bigger office more money bigger products like it gets pretty awesome uh, ironically i was playing i've been playing that this week and and, then, and, and, are, and are you all playing the real one or did you download the illegal one that makes you automatically lose the game for people pirating your game anybody who can download the legal uh -huh. one it. yeah it, it's me of course i got the official release yeah i know no yeah, problem. I forgot about that thing. I just, I just wanted to bring up that they did that. The only yeah. game I have a pirate copy of is Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. Huh? Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I see what you did there. Oh, the only copy I have is Corner Pro. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so also I've been seeing um this really, really good anime, which I absolutely like love. I've been watching a lot of it. It's called Black But um Black Butler, and pretty much yeah. it's like this um Black Butler. Yeah, I know it's no relation to QJ. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, Black Butler based on the American archetypes. It's me and QJ fused since apparently on American TV English people can only be butler, butlers or cockneys. Oh, yeah. either. You was unhung. Really smart. Definitely, he doesn't really have an accent. The child has an accent. 
but the butler kind of has more of an American accent, and none of them is black, but he dresses in black. And it's set between, like, um, I don't know what time Jack the Ripper time is, but that time. The Victorian. The Victorian. Yeah. Yeah. So, but see, like, the butler has this contract with the freaking kid, so he has to, like, literally do anything he says, like, because of some seal on his hand. And the butler is, like, crazy, like, um, like Naruto-powered. So oh. it's the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy? But not... It's not... It's, not, <laughs> it's kind of really intelligent and, like, I'm rated with this 10-year-old kid and the butler go out and, like, solve a bunch of murders and stuff, and it's really cool. Yeah, yeah the butler's a demon who uh, has a supernatural contract with the kid. Yeah. But he is, like, the nicest guy in the entire world. Oh, my God. And I love the fact that he loves cats and hates dogs. <gasps> He's so cute. Oh, my goodness. Anyway. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's why girls love this show. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have cats, cats and dogs living together. Because then that will lead to mass hysteria. Oh, well, see, another thing I like in the episode is that a lot of random characters in the background tend to spank him. It's like, thank you. Thank you, because I wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. And just lately, just this week, actually, I saw Iron Man three twice, and I just today saw the new Star Trek movie. And I will uh, tell you, I'm not going to give you a um. I don't know if this is a spoiler alert, but no, I think everybody here knows. Okay, Khan is Sherlock Holmes as Sherlock Holmes, except he's Khan. <laughs> yeah. And why did you see Iron Man three twice? Why? Why subject yourself to that? Because she wanted to I see Iron Man six. I saw no, it twice, too. I liked Iron Man 3. I thought it was freaking awesome, better than the first one. I am totally respect other people's opinions, but that is my personal <laughs> opinion. I like the movie. And I will say, I haven't seen the new Star Trek yet, but yes, like like I kept pushing and I mentioned on this before now, the fact it had Sherlock in it from Sherlock made me want to fucking watch that. As oh, much as, I, I mean, admittedly, it was so also good. done by the guy who made the first film, which kicked ass, but still, it's Sherlock <laughs> in space. <laughs> He was so good. Like in the middle of the street when he has to grab a random article of clothing to blend in, it's a freaking trench coat, of course. Nice. You know, it's like he his hair is like a part of like Sherlock. He's just Sherlock if he was in space and named Khan and in Star Trek. And a bad so, guy. Yeah, and a bad and, guy. And genetically engineered after having been cryogenically frozen. So <laughs> does that mean we're gonna hear Moriarty scream out Holmes? <laughs> <laughs> they did the screen, by the way. I'm not going to tell you how, but they, they did the screen. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. go on expecting the screen to be good, though. That's all I'll say. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. And you don't really catch it. You don't really expect it. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> oh, I have to say, I really well, like the performance. And you go to Iron Man 3 over the weekend. And yeah, just keep an eye out. I, I, I will be doing a review of that. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I liked it. Other people didn't like it. Some people loved it. You know, I liked it because, like, it had that badassery feel that, you know, I don't care why freaking fireworks are coming out of the suits when they explode. It doesn't have to make sense for me. Because right now I'm in badassery mode and it's awesome. I don't I, care that these freaking I, dumb guys. I, I saw it twice he's, and he's I. Getting his understand. ass kicked for 80% of the movie is badassery mode? Okay. Well, no, because he didn't have the suit. It was like supposed to show how he, how adequate he could be without the suit. Yeah. So. And and of course, and of course, she thinks it's badass. Remember, there was a woman in the suit the whole time. She's a damn feminist. First of all, shut the fuck up. There's nothing wrong with feminists. Second of all, full time. So I suggest you actually watch the movie yourself and educate yourself. Then third of all, some freaking um, it's not like he spends most of his time freaking out of the suit, not in the suit. And I love the kind of, like, there's a blatant overkill. Like, there's some guy, he freaking dumps his head in the fountain. He's knocked out. He's probably going to drown. You know what? He throws a freaking grenade in the fountain right next to his head anyway. Whoosh. Like, you know? Yeah. That was enough. Like, yeah, that whole scene was like Batman. He, he had effectively become Batman with only um, hardware store appliances. I don't so believe it's... Batman blows people up with grenades. That's yeah. true, but still. I believe that's against his one rule. It was kind I, don't, of I don't know. I don't know. That's necessarily true because in Nolan's trilogy, I distinctly recall him driving a fucking tank with rocket launchers built into it. Yeah, it's true. He did, yeah. but they weren't set to kill. They just dazed the cops. <laughs> they they probably killed. They were rubber like, missiles. <laughs> anyway. that, they were only set to kill when a woman got behind the wheel. I point. I direct you to Dark Knight Rises. 
I have to tell you, if he never actually kills anybody, what he does is he takes a person, saves them from being mugged, then puts them in an equally dangerous area, and you'll be safe for the next five minutes, and then leaves, mm-hmm. and then they get attacked after that five minutes is up. And that's how he kills people. And to, to be fair, the Catwoman part was the least offensive part of The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> really? Um, but the man's wife is his life, UPS man. Just like, just, just like from what people, from what people have been saying to, what people have been saying to us, I don't know. I still need to wait to see it. The woman in the Iron Man suit is the least offensive part of that because they shit over his main villain. Yeah. Literally, I was like, okay, fine. I was like, over I was, Iron Man himself. That was my biggest problem with the movie, but I'll get into that in my review. See, I, I okay. see. I was like, yeah. I, I was like, I was speaking to a lot of friends of mine when we do comic stuff, and I was talking to them. And I was like, okay. I, you know what, I'm going to be okay with this one. I don't mind spoilers for this one, because the second one sucked balls. So I was like, I didn't expect the third one to be good. And he's like, yeah, Iron Man, they do a brilliant job of. He feels like Iron Man. However, they shit over his main villain in a way that hasn't been shitted upon since Venom, which made me yeah. just go, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I have friends who like it, who also like the comics, because I don't mind it, because he told me that my friend, my friends at least told me, that the actual Mandarin is like a giant racist Chinese stereotype, and some people said that they found it harder to translate to film. Well, they could have done it the way that they were doing it. They just didn't have to shoot themselves in the foot halfway through. There's nothing wrong with Chinese stereotypes. One us hosting our show. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you want to see the Mandarin done right on film? I direct you to the movie The Shadow, starring Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I liked him. She's the punk is what. Is what Mandarin should have been in Iron Man three. You were now, fires. It was freaking hilarious. You, you mean unpopular and never heard of? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, right. on, 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 a, on a related note, Marcus, I thought the, I thought your least your biggest problem with Iron Man three was the fact that the Iron Patriot abandoned his best friend to die. They did. No, my biggest problem with Iron Man three is the is basically I completely disagree with Geeky Girl over there because I didn't feel that Tony Stark felt like Iron Man in this movie. Which is fine. It's all. Like subject- it's all. Yeah. It's all subjective, and this was about Geeky Girls Month, which means if she enjoyed the film this month, she enjoyed the film this month. I didn't enjoy the film. You can you can rip into the film and slaughter it or whatever whenever you go to do your review. Looking forward to that. Exactly. That was my month of highly controversial, appreciated stuff. <laughs> yeah. So so Richter, sounds like you have next week's bad movie of the week. Star Trek. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, but... Ouch! Wow. No, sorry, Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. Ha! <laughs> yes. Oh, oh no. God. I don't know about that. There's a review of it in Rise from the Airways on the X Pound now. Actually, that was well. Actually, that was, well, technically no. It was show. It was Showtime because we did the movie, but yeah. You know. Yes. But anyway. Yes. Yeah, so, all right. So we've carried on long enough in Iron Man three territory. Let's head on to our discussion and can I, can I, can I try not to make. I said, can I mention one more thing? Because uh, Mole did bring it up earlier. Mole was talking about the Defiance game. Um, there is a rise for the airways for that that I forgot that I had and haven't put up yet, so that will be coming. <laughs> what? You, you got a rise close. from the airways for the Defiance game? How dare you? That's our territory. For the TV show, <laughs> you, yeah. you know what I mean. I didn't mention a TV <laughs> show. I know. <laughs> know That's I a mean. badly done segue. Oh, shut <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, anyway, so on to the discussion. Shadow. See that's mm-hmm. a good segue. Yeah. Good segue. Speaking of Chinese stereotypes, take us away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully this uh, discussion topic won't take too long, but it probably will because it's a very charged, polarizing topic. It's very controversial, and uh, there's going to be quite a bit to say. So oh, let's boy. we'll see what we can do. Yes, I believe oh. you and Richter have the right to marry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We can in this state. Yes, yes, we can. But anyway, <laughs> you and Chris people visit. Also, I believe, no. that's, oh, also, I believe that's this week you can also get married in in uh, Minnesota. Oh, nice. nice. Let's be yeah, very so discussing. Hooray for America. <laughs> Yay. Nice and silent. Anyway, our discussion topic for this month is going to be twofold, actually. It's uh, digital distribution and DRM. Well, we think about it, do we like it? Do you know everything is shifting toward that in all mediums, uh, video games, movies, 
music. Movies and music have been doing that for years now. Games are now following. See, we have books going into the digital arena. <laughs> Pretty soon, you know, society is going to be run on the internet. See, when you said that games have been now getting into this territory and then books, I thought you were about DRM. I thought the closest thing to a DRM is Jim running out and yelling, Stop stealing that! <laughs> Funny. <laughs> I meant the digital distribution part. On, 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 on a related note, on a related note, for the benefit of the audience at home, would you like to explain what DRM is? Yeah. Digital rights management. Copyright protection. Okay, then. Right, right. Just to gotcha. confuse them more. Just to confuse yeah. them more, say copyright protection. That, essentially, <laughs> it, it basically right. means it, it's it's a function of you have to be online and you have to authenticate your copy of something that you bought in order to use it. I can't gotcha. get okay. rid of when I download my books on Kindle. Ah. Don't use Kindle. Buy an actual book. No. <laughs> Thank you. Here's what I do. I actually buy the book on Kindle. I actually buy the real book, but then I use the DRM to put it into my um instant um, audiobook maker. Uh, don't Why use, would you don't... not want to have the actual pages in your hand? That's the, That's the beauty of it. That's like half the battle. Yeah. yeah, because she doesn't want to get her copy of Fifty Shades of Grey sticky. Uh, any copy of Fifty Shades of Grey is probably already sticky. <laughs> Mine's laminated. I bet it is. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, you can't. I mean, Kindles are great. It's a fun thing. Now, it's just not the same as holding a real book in your hands. And if you're looking for a good yeah. book, go on buy a copy of Ben Fury by QJ Goodwin now. But yes. I have a shit ton of books, so I can't be carrying that shit with me because it'll take like a whole goddamn trunk. You see, that's I'm, true. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're you're as strong as She-Hulk. You can carry that shit. <laughs> you see, I, and I have to trust a lot with <laughs> You see, I'm with both people on that. When I go to when I do buy books, as you know, I do buy some like the Star Wars books and shit. I prefer the actual books. However, yeah. if I'm going on holiday or something like that, I don't want a suitcase full of fucking books. I I want I want a suitcase with like maybe a Kindle or something similar to a Kindle with my pad and then some books on it to read. You know what would be cool if and then they you realize had, you like, forgot your Kindle charger. <laughs> you know what would be cool if they had uh, the ability to um like have some kind of uh, a way that you can scan the barcode of the book. Well, I mean uh, maybe you wouldn't be able to do this because you know you would be able to do this if, if the book was in the store but you could like scan it and put it in on your kindle if, if you didn't want to like take the book with you uh save room that'd be cool they should do what dvds and blu-rays and shit do now when you buy a book have it come with a voucher to give you a free kindle book like some dvds and stuff over here come with digital versions for free some will, some will do awesome. that over here too but the problem is more and more than we're doing on that fucking ultraviolet service yeah. well Let's start off with, I guess, we could go the video game route. Let's go to the FGR contingent. What do you guys think of video games going to uh, digital distribution and, and the DRM race, as it were? DR, DRM, we already discussed in depth on XGR. But uh, like, like we said, we understand it. We don't like it. However, right, uh, digital distribution, I like digital distribution for some stuff. I don't like DLC because some of it's useless and pointless and deliberately left out of games. However, digital distribution of some games, or, for example, indie games that can't have a right to publish themselves in a shop floor, perfectly okay downloading those shit. Like, the new Worms games, where technically Worms is a franchise that's gone for years, but it's one of those, it's not, they don't have quite the fan base to put out the full hard copies until after the games have made money. But there's a thing that if you like from if your like PS3 messes up or your 3DS messes up and you have the digital version up, you probably have to buy that shit again sometimes, or it's lost. So they can't be held for like the digital property, anything damages it or anything. Yes, on Wii U and 3DS. No on PS3, because right now I'm on a different PS3 because I got rid of my first one and then I had a new PS3. I, I phoned I phoned up Sony because I couldn't get some de some of one of the games I downloaded and they were like, oh okay, yeah, can you prove it was you? I gave him my addresses and shit, and I said, okay, yeah, it's definitely registered to you. Okay, boom, just reset the rights on all my shit. I think it's the same with the, with all the systems, uh, because I know in three, um, on the 360, I had uh, the DLC for uh, uh, Arkham <coughs> City, um, the, the one with uh, Harley Quinn's Revenge, and uh, something happened in my 360, or something happened in my, uh, my uh, save account, uh, or 
because I was using my flash drive, and uh, I had to um, save. I had to re-download it, but it was still free. And it, I guess it was because it was registered to my 360. But it, if yeah. it was broken, I would have been able to figure it out uh, or get like talk to somebody to get it back in some yeah. way. Yep, that's how PS3 does it. That's how 360 does it. Ironically, and even though I do like these, that's not how Nintendo does it. And for some reason, Nintendo has it where, yeah, if your system gets broke or damaged, they're the only ones that seem to do it. If your system gets broke or damaged or stolen, you've lost your you've lost your downloaded shit. And I'm like, yeah, you need to fix that shit because essentially they don't have pro uh, proper account based store thing like other ones do. Yeah, that's why I don't want to buy anything digital on my 3DS. If it's <laughs> over like a couple bucks, because yeah. I'll, I'll admit, I've already bought digital content on my Wii U. I've bought Monster Hunter. I've bought Tank Tank Tank. <laughs> I bought Funky Barn. You did buy that. I did buy that. And I've also recently downloaded the Resident Evil Revelations demo, which I haven't tried it out yet, but I'm looking forward to it because I'm looking forward to that game. But yeah. yeah. Back on the topic of DRM and digital distribution, I'll let Rick do and Stacey go now. Do you want to talk a little bit about Nintendo? <laughs> okay, Stacey, go. See, that's the thing. Like, I don't like it because, like, literally my Wii U has broken, like, three times. Cause, and, and the first time was my sister. The second time was my parents. Um, the both times. You and, broke your Wii U? Oh, no. You broke my Wii. Oh, okay. Wii, okay. Yeah, because the first time was my sister playing it in, like, the rain or something or whatever. to ask, like, um... <laughs> So, uh, so, yeah, I had to yeah. With so that's not a hardware problem. That's a fucking idiot problem. <laughs> I don't, like I said, I'm not gonna even ask. She paid for, for it to get fixed and stuff. But the second time, it got. I think it was like maybe a third protect or something. But yeah, every single time, my whole thing got re um, reset, and I had to call them and make sure I got my freaking games back. But I don't think it will happen now on the Wii U or the 3DS. Cause like I bought a ton of crap, and I bought like a ton of ten dollar crap. Like I freaking have like all my Legends all the games. And like my freaking Tetris party, so I can beat some Asians. Sorry, um, I have a future Tetris. Uh, and I have my freaking Dr. Mario and everything. And I paid for all that crap. I paid for that, and I want it back. I if I lose, that would make me so pissed. So I'm really hoping, like with the Wii, I've only bought digital on um, um actual hardware so far. It, N Nintendo have said to their credit, they are looking at. A account based system similar to PSN or Xbox Live's thing where you could then re download other things. It's just with how the patents and stuff are in place of how these can work, they have to find a way around it that doesn't match PSN, 360, Steam, Origin, or any of the other ones. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> They'll find a way. To be fair, more and more people, more and more companies are doing it, which means if Nintendo will find a way around it. Speaking of like copyright stuff, I don't know if this was related, but goddamn freaking Steam made it so you have to have to re-download all my freaking Pony mods, and I don't know how to do it, and it's all harder to do, and I have to put it in a specially custom file, and it's like really hard. And they actually did mention in that self-help thing. God forbid, would you want something or make your TF2 characters look like ponies? That was actually a section in the help section, but now they made it all harder. I think that's like a copyright thing, or they want you to play the original game or something. I don't know. That drove me crazy, because I spent like hours and hours and hours customizing it, and boom, gone. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Victor? Uh, for digital distribution, um, I would, a couple years ago, I really hated the idea simply because you know, I, I'm a collector. I like to keep my physical copies, so I wasn't overly pumped about everything going digital. But the last couple of years, it's really, con you know, one, not being able to afford many new releases, and two, the just the sheer ease of having all of them accessible without going and swapping discs or whatever. So it's almost easier to browse what you have. You know, you can just kind of look through the list, and it's, I don't know, it's less effort, so it seems it's a little easier and faster to switch to some other game. So I'm actually liking it more and more, a lot faster than I thought I would. But right. for uh, DRM, I know this isn't technically DRM, but we're talking about dumb shit Nintendo does. <laughs> uh, that some save files on the Wii, as you, you probably know where this is going, yes. uh, <laughs> are, are locked on the system, so you can't move it or copy it or anything. And I mean, fuck them, because 
when my first Wii broke, I lost like 120 hours of Monster Hunter because of that dumb shit. Because they wouldn't <laughs> let me move it or back it up or anything. Yep, it seems to be any of the ones with... It seems to be any of the ones with online yeah, or certain stuff like it's PS, cool like, like PS3. They don't want to like copy it because I guess that they program their stuff so poorly that if uh, two save files with the same like Wi-Fi ID like play against each other, probably Nintendo's infrastructure just shits itself or something. No, I, I think I think it's more about along the lines of the same reason PlayStation and Xbox have copy protected saves on their system too. They don't, <clears throat> certain ones are copy protected because one, either the developers want it, or B, it's because they don't want people just going online, buying the game, going online, getting a fucking save that unlocks absolutely fucking everything in there, going online and pwning everyone. But they mm. wouldn't probably pwn them because it'd be someone else's save. But the thing is, on uh, PS3 and 360, <clears throat> very few uh, files are actually locked. The one I know on PS3 off the top of my head is Street Fighter 4. And on 360, there is uh, there's Sacred 2, and I want to say Rock Band. There was also a but, couple of like, Dragon Ball Z Nintendo, ones. Yeah, but like literally Nintendo, it's everything that connects to online, whether or not you actually connect to online with it. So Samurai Warriors <clears throat> 3, that was locked too, even though I never connected because of their fucking dumb shit. And you also have to realize, Mole, with uh, 360 and PS3 stuff, yeah, it's copy protected and it's locked, but you can still move it from one system to another if you're migrating systems. Yeah. Like, if, Richter couldn't even do that because he yeah. got a new Wii. Even, he couldn't migrate his save file from the other Wii to the one he had, which yeah. is retarded. That's unacceptable. See, you should be able to because when one of the ones that did that was Smash Brothers, and I had to wait, then basically my Wii got fucking ruined by someone when they knocked it the fuck off the table and broke. I, I ended up going out getting another Wii. I managed to I managed to use that one because it managed to turn on and it would stay on for a while, but it had problems with certain shit like you couldn't get you it wouldn't read discs and shit. So I managed to do that and I can't remember how I did it, but I did what they said and it backed up absolutely everything, including my Smash Brothers save. Oh wow! Now, I've never seen any kind of legit backup tool. <laughs> yeah, it was on the it was on Nintendo's official site with how to do it in case <coughs> something like that happened. It took me a fucking ages to fucking browse that shit. But I was like, I've spent hours on Smash Brothers. I got Toon Link. I don't want to lose Toon Link. Mm -hmm. Not because he's awesome because he's Toon, Toon Link, more because he was endgame shit that you had to be really anal to get. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I kind of agree with Richter, though. I When digital distribution was first coming up, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Like, Richter, I'm a collector. I like to have the hard copies of the games and stuff. But now, I fucking love digital distribution. I mean, I still prefer to have a hard copy, but like Richter said, you know, convenience and price. I mean, I got, what, Tomb Raider, the digital deluxe version, essentially, for like fucking 30 bucks. That was totally worth it. <laughs> you know, so digital distrib distribution is good. DRM, no, just no. Just but ten times. Are we talking about digital distribution now as well? Right, well, now it's getting really vague to other stuff besides just games. Yes, we could talk about that too. In fact, yeah. I was about to say. Uh, well, he did us first because we're the game people, and then yeah. I assumed he was going to segue into the other stuff. See, see, cause I was I, I was going to make the point of when it comes to some other stuff. I'm one of those, I don't like digital, I like digital distribution for some stuff, I don't like it for a lot, even though I've got some games like, because the store happened to have sold out or something, but I don't like them because the more digital distribution happens, the more jobs and stuff get taken because, hey, guess what, shops don't aren't needed anymore, I hate mm -hmm. that shit, like, look, like, since Netflix and stuff has come along, look at, look at what's happened to Blockbuster. Yeah, and same I like with Netflix. games. Yeah, and I like Netflix. I mean, not games, uh, movie, I mean, um, music. Yeah, they however, don't have music shops anymore. However, some digital distribution I do like, like Comic Xology, which I use for comics, because the comics you can buy there, I can go on there and buy the digital versions of the American comics. They're not in my shops, which means the only way for me to get them is to import it, go to specialized comic shops, which don't really have anything. They just have, like, fucking a thousand copies of the really, like, vague fucking suit, like, He-Man comic from, like, back in the fucking 80s. Maybe a couple <laughs> of My Little Ponies and shit thrown in there, you know, the shit no one wants. 
then they'll have like statues of some stuff like Iron Man and stuff and toys which people will want. But the comics themselves, they don't really want. But so it's like, yeah, okay, if I want to get the latest comics, I can now in a down over country, which is beneficial. But yeah, I don't really like where digital distribution is going in terms of what it does to shops. I just want one thing um, with when you said the blockbusters. Lately, I've been noticing that blockbusters are trying to be like um, the red box and making red boxes out, you know, like the little one dollar yeah. seats. Yeah. And the seats of them, they were called blue boxes or something like that. So they were blue stations. Well, then I saw a red box that was blue that said red box on it to make people think they were buying from Blockbuster. <laughs> it says Netflix in the little stripes. So that's how pathetic we're getting with this yeah. whole thing. And while we talk about this with the DRM, and it's meant to be announced this w- this month, hopefully it's not. Show of hands, all the people who think Microsoft are fucking retards for making their, uh, the next Xbox online only. If that's yeah. true. It's right here. Yeah. Very yeah, like I said, if it's true. I'm hoping it's not if, true. Yeah. Um, I, I'm actually hoping that's not true. I may not like Microsoft. I may think it's the most poorly designed one out there. However, I know people that play it. I know people that enjoy it, so I still want them to enjoy it. And that's going to hurt a lot of people and stop a lot of people actually enjoying what they enjoy. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not you know what I mean? The things that they're doing, like, uh, for the next-gen systems are just really, I mean, I don't, I don't get a lot of the ideas and the motivations behind it, like the whole non-backwards compatibility about PS, the PS4. But that's that's nothing to yeah. do with uh, digital distribution, I was just mentioning. Yeah, that. That, that's mainly due to the fact the parts are different, and like the original ps freeze when they came out in order to have the backwards compatibility you need the parts from the previous system and it can cost an arm and a leg because not what only would you be buying a ps4 it. you'd also be downloading the ps3 and they said yeah. you'll be able to download ps3 stuff or stream ps3 games to the ps4 you just won't be able to play your hard games on it uh, that's gonna suck. Uh, well, the thing i hate with that which i don't know if it's this counts or anything it is i hate the and uh, thing they're getting rid of with the PS3 where they're trying to, but well, you don't have to thank fuck, but they're trying to make it so you're not anonymous, so I'm not known as just my PS3 title they want me to actually put my real name there and like, oh look, here's a photo of me out and about, I don't want that shit <laughs> yeah mm. forces you to social network, network. Yeah. But uh, how does Jim feel? he's been really quiet I, I was letting you guys go, because you all know more about this than I do, but um Personally, I can't understand why some companies are doing it, but it's, a, it's it's unfortunately just a trend of where society is heading where, you know, every, everybody, everybody wants to make sure that every little thing is owned by somebody in some way where they can stop you from, you know, doing anything with their stuff. But it's, it's, it's always a constant race. It's always going to be a constant race of... The people that want to own the rights and want you to do things officially versus the people that are trying to counteract whatever the means are to prevent you from counteracting it in the first place. It's always going to be a fight back and forth. Um, and yep, which, like I said, I, I support the, the, the DRM's principle. I don't support the way it goes about. There should be a better way. For example, yeah. SimCity, which I played. I shouldn't have to always be online to play a SimCity game. That's stupid. However, I do support the stopping of piracy and stuff like that because it's like, well, if you want the games, don't bitch. Right? Oh, the games cost too much. I'm just, or the excuse that hacker, that modders and hackers use of, I'm just trying it out. It's the same thing as if I was to b- test drive a car with my, which my thought with that is, no, it's not. Because if you test drive a car, you can't always permanently keep the car without paying. I'm going to try to money from the bank. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, um, and this is not necessarily directly to the topic at hand, but the other thing I'm glad of that both Sony and Microsoft decided to abandon before this generation of systems is coming out is the whole "we're gonna lock your disc games to your system so nobody else can use them" thing. Uh, yep, I'm I'm glad about that. Although to be fair, with uh, with that, people aren't still 100% sure Microsoft's not doing that. Well, if they're doing if they're doing that and you have to be online all the time, yeah, Microsoft is never going to release another game system ever. <laughs> yeah, sadly, now they, sadly go they will. Sadly, they will because the fanboys will always want to shoot a generic shooter with no personality. They yeah. will, but that honestly, if it if it gets to that badly and nobody's playing games on the system, then the people that make Halo are going to be like, "Fuck you," and they'll go put, release it on the PS4. 
they're doing that. It's called <laughs> Destiny. Oh! <laughs> I see what you did there. That's a good segue from generic shooters. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> what? It is. It's, it's a shit clone of Halo made by Bungie. Yeah. I know. It's probably going to be a generic shooter. So it will. Saying. It'll be a horrible generic shooter. It is, it is. Yeah, I think the the main problem with it is the um, I mean they do it, it it's for convenience, but like everything technology wise, it's done for convenience. There's always the risk of losing everything, uh, like just in in general, like uh, if you go into the entire retrospect of it, losing all electronic um ability whatsoever, you know, like in Revolution then we'd be fucked. And then the whole thing, of, uh, on a smaller scale, um, having a phone or something and downloading a shit ton of apps and then breaking your phone, then you're shit, shit out of luck and uh, lost out on a lot of money. So it's like, uh, if there, there there needs to be a more foolproof way of, uh, of making sure you don't, um, you don't lose out on all of the stuff that you've earned. And- in, I, in the process. I completely mm-hmm. agree with that. Like, I was talking to, I think it was you the other day, Marcus, or oh, a couple of weeks back, when we, we, we were talking about how one of the things me and Marcus enjoyed with some with some stores, which you don't really get nowadays because they're now, only the big stores are surviving, is, for example, my old comic book store before it went to the one it is now. I used to love going in there talking to the guy and he'd be like oh yeah this is what i've done this week oh by the way you, you i recognize you because he d- didn't get as many customers i recognize you you're the guy that always used to buy the supergirl comics right and i was like yeah here you go and he pulls out like the new supergirl or like in a spin-off or some shit like that and he'd be like i kept this just for you in case you wanted to buy if you don't that's cool and you can put back he'll put back on the shelf if you ever say no but it's more that personal service yeah which i feel we're losing and as well as that when you mentioned about the stuff people are losing there was a story over here a while back which made me sad and all facepalm and weep for humanity all at once. What's that? I understood the person being upset. However, someone lost their mobile phone with like this special with this case on they had. That was the only foot that was the only photos they had of their children. Because they didn't print them off or put them on walls or have hard copies of their photos and they lost it. Which that's kind of makes really me sad. It's like print that shit off if you ah. want to keep it that bad. And the the worst part with that, which made me facepalm and weep for humanity, they had a fo- hard photo of their phone, which they no joke made missing posters for. <laughs> wow. In case, in case you know, someone hadn't picked them for. Oh, this is a new phone. I must keep it. So in case their phone is just lying somewhere, people look at that and go, "Oh, it's just a lost. Yeah. It's, it's a stray. Let's just leave it." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, "What the fuck?" That's, I don't want. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in all fairness, a... that's that's a valid problem in in today's society. Because in yeah. one of the early episodes of the show Revolution, and Marcus can attest to this because he saw this one with me. There's a character on the show called Maggie, uh, who, spoiler alert, has since died. Um, and if, but basically, she had the same problem. In, in the show, the premise is that there's no electricity and nothing uh, that runs on power will work. And she carries around her old cell phone, and for a few episodes, I don't know why, until she confesses that it's because in her cell phone are the only pictures that she has of her children, who are on the other side of the world, and she can't get there. So she may never see them again, and the only pictures she has of them are in this phone that won't turn on. So it, it's not, it's like that's a big that's really becoming a big thing in today's society is that everybody has their photos on their computers, their phones on Facebook. What happens if all that shit doesn't work? Nobody has print photos of anything anymore. Yeah. I go to Target yeah. and just stick in my memory card and then print out all my few photos and that's what that's what I do. So yeah, that's, yeah. See, I I think that uh, the way that um, digital things are being used is like everything is being depended on it and it's like it could be taken away so quickly it's almost like um that movie uh, sorry to bring it up because it was terrible but uh surrogates in the sense that i feel like that's uh the end game of where it's going nobody's going to end up leaving a house everything is going to be digital and right where you can access it um all the way down to how you interact with the next person yep hey that that was a good movie it's it like, was well. I, I have I've heard 
next thing, so I don't know. It's like, it's like I'll admit a personal story from real life. Uh oh. But yeah, personal story yeah. from real life. When we had we we had problem here a while back when I had my previous internet where we lost internet because the hub just didn't work. And no joke, my little niece and nephew, one of them asked a question to me, how are we going to watch our shows? Because they only watch because they their shows were all on Netflix. Yeah. And I was like, well, you could still watch it on TV. It's not the same. They have adverts. I'm like, we can fast forward the adverts. We have the technology, but it's a case of they wanted Adver to watch it. On... There's adverts on fucking Netflix. Yeah, no, there's not. There's not. Oh, I thought they put a little advert in the middle. Uh, nope. Yeah, on, on Netflix, oh, okay. I, I, oh, at least over here, I press play and I watch the whole thing all the way through. But oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I used to have Netflix streaming. I haven't had it in a while. So yeah, maybe but maybe I'm just remembering. The, the thing with that was like, okay, I get it. You can go down Netflix and you can pick all the shows. I love Netflix. I love love film too, which is similar over here. However, if that goes out, you can still watch TV. However, yes, I do miss the internet if it goes off because I use it for other purposes. But it would like talk to people and stuff like that. But it, the internet is for porn. Yeah, and porn, of course. <laughs> it's a case of, yeah, with the digital distribution nowadays, like you guys said, we're losing so much shit in order to gain so little. It's like, yeah. oh, boohoo, Blockbuster. Yeah, Blockbusters has now gone out of business, so you can't rent games. But don't worry, you can now download Angry Birds in Space on your phone. <laughs> See, I, I, I take, I mean, I, I get it's for if convenience, but I take, um, actually going to the place and buying it any day because just, I mean, it might be an old-fashioned thing, but it's just like it feels more satisfying when you actually take the extra mile to go and. And buy something, and then have it the physical thing in your hands, uh, and and be able to benefit from that rather than. I mean, I I can get the downloading, and and it's um, it's it works, but it's like I mean, you know, I I wouldn't want to sacrifice one over the other. Basically. Yeah, exactly. It's like when you go into a shop. One of the benefits to it is. You get to see stuff you wouldn't have expected, or you get to see offers and deals you didn't expect. Whereas if you go onto like Amazon and it's a search bar, most of the time you will type in the thing you are actually searching for, find it, get it. Whereas, say so like I could go into like I don't know fucking HMV over here, I could be like, okay, I'm gonna look for the new season of Community review coming soon for me and QJ, and basically. While I'm looking for it, I could be like, okay, they don't have it here. Oh, cool, they got the box set. This I haven't seen. I've wanted to see this. Wait, it's only this price. Fuck yeah, I'm getting this. Yeah. I think that's what they have on for Steam, but you know. Yeah, they they have um they have deals and offers and stuff on Amazon too. But to be fair, with Steam and with Amazon, most a lot of people like myself, when I go on there and I type stuff in. I'm, go I'm, I'm only typing stuff in and only searching for the thing I want myself. I can't really be asked to see their adverts for a bazillion other games I'm not interested in. Well, I never search for stuff. I always just check out the deal because it looks good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, which means you, you have that problem with that. It's like, uh, and going to what QJ said as well, one thing that kind of annoyed me when I saw it, it was doing it over there, and ironically did it here, but we don't celebrate it. They had Black Friday deals on online web pages. To me, that kind of defeats the purpose. As yeah. whenever I've seen Black Friday over there, it's more of a thing of basically, okay, it's it's like a game. Whoever yeah. runs there and gets it first gets it. it it's strong because it's, it's survival of the fittest, not whichever one can type first. Beat the yeah. shit out of someone from on to Black Friday. That's probably why you think it's better to. <laughs> <laughs> to actually there and deal with the fucking worst of humanity. Ah, yeah, but it, it, it would you see to me with that that would be one of those things of the offers are so good. If you want to risk dealing with those people, the reward pays off. That's you shouldn't give someone true. that type of reward for no constant effort. Because like, okay, I personally don't like a lot of crowds. I don't like people, which means I probably wouldn't go join a Black Friday offer. However, if someone could take the time, do it plan it out, know what they were doing, they damn well deserve their shit. I mean, it's literally like a, a warrior coming home yeah, with their prize. sit around for like 
10 hours outside, fuck that. Like, I'm going to sit yeah. in my house. And if I get the deal online, I'll do that. See, it depends on if you really want something, if it's something that you, you absolutely well, can't you also don't do without. Drag anywhere see so. we're, we're pitching the things like this very differently like we've had offers over here where they've been chaotic not as bad obviously but we're pitching things very differently rick does pi pi basically picturing a load of people in spaghetti stained shops stood outside <laughs> uh, stood outside like yeah i'm gonna get the last fucking power ranger doll i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna grab that that'll be mine <laughs> kid behind but i want it and now if i see it first rick does seem like the worst of humanity in my eyes I'm seeing the end battle from Lord of the Rings. We're fucking yeah, charge for the Furby. <laughs> I, 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 I must have the last Turbo Man doll. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pit like that pitching Lord of the Rings with like like I said with like the ch for the Furby and you know, then go grab the Furby, pay it. When you take it home, you hold it up like like a warrior holding up the head of the mutilated Cyclops to its people. Whereas we're seeing it is. Do, yeah, do, do, do. Exactly, whereas Victor's seeing <laughs> the reality of the situation. <laughs> you know, that's the other good part about digital distribution. They usually don't run out. Yeah. That, yeah that's that, that's yeah. valid. That that's a valid point too. My my always my always concern about digital distribution is as something I mentioned earlier of, you know, lo it's basically losing your shit. And regardless of the, oh, when you can back it up and it's in the cloud and it's this and that. I tend not to trust that shit. I would rather have a physical disc in my fucking hand that I know is going to work. And that's why I'll download demos and I'll download little things here and there. But if I'm into a full game, I'm not downloading. I'm going to buy a disc. That's why when the uh, the Telltale Games Back to the Future game came out, I wasn't downloading those episodes. I waited until all five episodes were out and I bought it on the disc. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I, that's I better. downloaded yeah. that. But yeah. <laughs> See, one thing with that, Jim, where, like you mentioned, then another aspect of it, which people are protesting at the moment with iTunes, is you can back up your own shit to another one of the things you own, fair enough. However, people are now running into the issue of the, you've got people who have got thousands of pounds worth of music and shit backed up that they spend hours listening to with their children and stuff. If they die, their children are not allowed to ask, access it, despite the fact they... Uh, it, it would belong to their parents. I'm not saying, oh yeah, they should get all their shit, but when yes. when, a, when someone dies, they leave a will. They leave a legacy behind. Like, sadly, when I die, someone's going to get a whole bunch of Star Wars crap they don't want to see. Yeah. Oh, they don't care about but I was passionate about. They're going to get that shit. Oh, well, by, 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 then they'll, by then they'll be on Star Wars Part 48. Nobody will know what the hell it is. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's like, and to you in my will, uh, I leave to you my iTunes password. <laughs> May you use it well. iTunes! Yeah. I use my iTunes password to you. Yeah. One, it's, 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 two, it's, it's on some, it's three, on, it's on, four. <laughs> it's on some ancient flash drive. It's like you're breaking it, and it, it basically you have to like find an old computer to use it. It looks like it looks like the old, but it looks like the opening scenes from fucking Tron Legacy like where he's breaking into the arcade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's like I'll be honest. Like for example, when my grand died, um, when my dad died and stuff like that in real life. One of the cool parts of one of the cool parts of the dying that just sounds yeah, so sick. Yeah, this is my, my dead grandma died. This is awesome. No, but I was gonna say one of the <laughs> one of the more touching parts I should say about that is when they've gone and you've got like all their VHS tapes or something and yes, I do have a load of them. Is when you look at film and you're like, Okay, they had this film they this is clearly on the top of their pile. This is the bit out of all of them, this is the one that's been watched the most. I'm gonna sit down and see what the hell this is and you pop in and you'll be like I could totally see why they'd like this. It's nice, and you get that. Uh, it's silly, but you get that connection. Whereas yeah. stopping that flat out is just like, oh fuck you. Yeah, yeah. You can't beat the organic. Uh, actually having matter in your hands, uh, part of it's consumerism. True. Yeah, yeah. Try yeah. for a picture show at like age eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like, this VHS, I popped it. I'm like, I don't understand this. Oh, I, I've mentioned it to Jim and Marcus, as I've said in the past, where yeah. basically I've pulled out a VHS tape and I've said to like, my niece and nephew, okay, I'm going to put this on. And the first time I did that, they were like, what is that? And I'm like, it's a film. No, they're not. What do you mean? Films are round and flat. <laughs> And it, you feel yourself age dramatically, like, damn, oh. you kid. Mind blown. <laughs> you punk kids! Although, oh, speaking God. of that, which, which will make you laugh even more, and will probably make age you even more, 
my nephew came out with something in a shop the other day, which made me so fucking proud, and I loved him. Mm. Basically, he wanted to get the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series that's out because they've brought out the volumes of that. And he's buying it and because he, he gets a little bit of pocket money. He goes to buy it and he asks the woman at the store, he goes, Excuse me. And she goes, Yeah. He goes, Do you have the new Turtles show on? And she goes, Yeah, it's right there. And he goes, No, that's a DVD. I want Blu ray. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. And I was I was just stood next to her and uh, no joke, it was almost like her jaw just hit the floor. He's like, I don't want D V D, they don't look as good and I'm like, it's so awesome. <laughs> and part of me's just sat there thinking, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so so what so what did you say? Did you have a Blu ray? Uh, no, they didn't do a Blu ray copy of that, so he ended up buying the D V D one. Which when he watched oh. it after he finished, I said, So did you like your purchase? He goes, Yeah, I liked it, but it would it would have been better on Blu ray. And that's all he said and just walked off. <laughs> um, I have to uh, mention, this is a little bit unrelated, but um, still related to digital distribution. Have you heard of the um, the downloadable gun? Is that your next book? Oh, the 3D no. printer? Yeah, it's, yeah. It. yeah. You can download a, uh, an actual gun and, uh, and print it off with a 3D printer, and it, it's... Um, you can actually use it. It's a legal gun. You can shoot firearms from it. But you have to do it in parts. If you do the whole gun by itself on one printer or something, it's illegal. They're like doing a thing right now that you have to do it in parts or something. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So when you create that gun, it's going to be in like plastic. Think about like terrorists and other people using that to, you know, get guns into like courthouses and shit. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the perfect mm-hmm. like, assassination gadget. That, that's the biggest. Um, the biggest thing but i mean well i mean if you think about it i mean because you you still have to have a license to shoot firearms you still have to have a a, a, like yeah like a a license and um a warrant to use it but um you can still get in other countries that don't require that kind of thing and where firearms aren't as uh prevalent do you have a web page we can include in our youtube video below uh i can find one yeah yeah. Yeah, that's like Jeff said no. <laughs> but, but really we better we we better we better get used to that now because what is it marking about Marcus in about three hundred years, you're gonna be able to push a button and a phaser will appear in front of you. Yeah. Pretty much. Also, well, uh, so, uh, somebody in an article brought up the point that really <laughs> that, that that's scary, but not as scary as the fact that eventually we're gonna get to the point to the point where somebody can three D print a three D printer. Yeah. <laughs> and it's That's pretty See, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say two things. One, it's pretty bad nowadays that kids can go on the internet and find out how to make bombs and shit. But that's not really digital distribution, but it's still bad. Mm-hmm. What about the kids on my block that learned how to make crystal meth in third grade? There is really? that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but God. to be fair, you are ghetto. What? Stace, <laughs> what are we talking about doing meth? Hey, I never did it, but people in third grade tried to sell it to me. Yeah, she misheard you. That's why she's dropped maths. Well, yes, yeah, so I was going to ask, uh, Mr. Phoenix, what what is your opinion on digital distribution, DRM, and uh, future of the written word? I gave a bunch of my opinions earlier. Where the hell were you? Not about the written word. Wrap it up, How it will still affect oh, about, about About written work? Yes. You're trying to wrap it up, it's you dick I would yeah. think digital distribution would affect you most of all since it affects your uh, place of employment. Um, It does, but <clears throat> the thing is, the way libraries are – I'm a librarian, and for those listeners who might not be familiar with my profession of day job. um, And really, it is certainly changing a lot about the way libraries work. Um, Personally, I don't think books will ever be completely obsolete, but with the way tablets are going now, it's – you know, now uh, our our purpose is sort of changing. In addition to obviously, you know, keeping books ready and being able to find things in books, you know, a lot of when you go to library school these days to get a library science degree, which yes, you need a degree to be a librarian. It's not just being an old lady going shush. Um, <laughs> get away. <laughs> but basically, um, it's a lot about now being able, knowing how to find information on the internet, how to use search engines to maximum capacity, and not just Google something. How to and how to use Boolean searching and how to, you know, how to find sources that are legitimate and scholarly, not just some random schmuck posted on Wikipedia. It seems um, as useful as a degree in Klingon. Yeah. 
sister was and a also um also about how you know knowing how the technology works how because there's a lot of people especially people of more advanced age that don't exactly know how all this te- new technology works that need help with it so I don't about this. People that have all the you know, tablets and Kindles and iPads and all this good stuff that don't know how to access their library books on it. We show them you can get this you can get this app to get library books, you can get this app to download free music, you can get this app to do this, this app to do that. Um, mm, and you know, how yeah. to explain basically teach people how to use this technology and how to do these different things and support those in much the same way that we support, you know, the the written word in, in book format. Um I, I I certainly there is gonna be a big wave in the future where a lot of things are going to be digitized, but Especially with the with the as mentioned earlier, the potent possibility of technology failure. I don't think books will ever be fully obsolete. I think the use of them will drastically fall, but it, they'll never be completely gone. Uh, I'm going to say something a little controversialish to you, Jim. Digital distribution for books is closer to the source material. Mm-hmm. How, how so? Because nowadays, as it has been for the last uh, God knows when. What is it they actually? What is it those writers use to type up their books? It's a computer. Uh, Therefore, you're reading it on the actual source. The book, it's more like the watered down abridgment. Well, <laughs> then it, that's true, but it depends because most most authors will usually start because at least a lot of authors, again, maybe not necessarily. For example, I know our own uh, QJ doesn't do this, but I know a lot of authors actually started with like a notebook and physically write down a lot of their stuff and then retype it. I know. Uh, in all our interviews, J.K. Rowling of the Harry Potter series, she talked about how you know she wrote Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone on you know, in a, on a, you know, like like on a, on a notebook on a train and then copied it back into a computer later. So yeah, a lot of actually, other people... I I did that with uh, Ben Fury. So it, uh, when I was in school, whenever I didn't, I wasn't near a computer. So I mean, yeah, it's it's viable. Be, yeah, a lot, a lot of other fair, still Jim, do that. As I was gonna say, to be fair, Jim, a lot of authors do stuff like. They don't drive past schools and expose themselves to children or other things QJ does. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> I saw you. You're on a list. He Googled you. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, then, anyway. <laughs> Jim, I, I put to you then the question I have is with where digital distribution is going, especially since. Um, As you pointed out, the libraries are now moving toward technology and other forms of media aside from books. Do you perhaps see in the future the library, physical library itself becoming obsolete and seeing the library going to digital Um, distribution where you can get books online for free and like fucking stream movies and stuff? And then do you want to have a job? Well, that that is... Yeah, excuse me. Are we done? Can I, talk, can I talk now? Okay. So, as I was saying, um, that's certainly a potent possibility. I mean, there's a lot of services now, like um, a lot. We, my personal library tried it and it didn't work out so well for us. But a lot of libraries offer what's called a 24/7 reference service, where basically you could basically get on an instant messenger with the library to ask a reference to ask a reference question about something. Um, and obviously, with the whole, you know, with a lot of movies and TV shows and you know, books and whatnot being available through digital media online. Yeah, that, there's a, certainly a possibility that um, physical libraries might not exist, at, at least not in the form that they are today. It might be more lines of instead of a place where people come to see information, it might be simply a place where a lot of people that have information are located, and they're providing it to people through whatever uh, electronic channels are available to them at that time. So and there'll always be – the thing about libraries is it's not about the format of the information. It's about – the, the way it's taught in library schools is that there's information and there's the people and we're the bridge between the two. Is we're the bridge is we have all this information over here and we know how to we know how to how to, to gauge it and filter it and sort it and use it to give you exactly what you're looking for. Okay. And that that's kind of our position. And regardless of what format the information is in, whether it's in print media, in books and magazines, whether it's electronic media on the internet, in files, what have you. Whether it's on you know on discs or on tapes or you know on digital players, whatever it's on, you know, there's still going to need to be someone there to you know be the the for lack of a better term the uh, the the guardian of the information that you know you know can provide it to the people and they can help sort it and go through it and you know be be the person that knows how to use the information and how to be that that um, I'm going to blow your mind that the giver library. of the information. Yeah. The 
at my school actually has pornography in the form of DVDs in the library. Like, legitimately, like, on the shelf in the library. Nice. What? Well, I'm, nice, I'm and not, now they can I'm, see what you got up to before college. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. I mean, we don't we don't have it anymore. But once upon a time, before I started working there, my library carried Playboy magazine on microfilm. No, no, I'm talking about actual right. pornography. Like, yes. <laughs> however, I will counteract what you said, Jim. I do think library libraries are needed, and I do think that it's good to have them. However, I hate to I, say it, I don't think they're going to still be around in a few years, in, in like 10, 20 years time, only because, wow. Like you said, right now you're the bridge between the gap for the people to basically know where this information is. No joke, I've seen a kid in my room browse the PlayStation Store, find the movie he wanted, and downloaded it. Mainly, I sat here to make sure he didn't download anything else because it was my card details, but I let, I let him pick out the film he wanted, he downloaded it, he searched for it himself. Which means it's more of a case of people are now growing up with the technology where they know how to go search Kindle for the rental books if they have them. They know how to search the video iTunes and stuff for rentals. It's it's become way too easy, which means your your bridge between the gap is basically like those pe like like those people that try to phone me up and are like, oh, by the way, did you know? This information about a computer to help you fix it. It's like, dude, your your advice is stuff basic people know. If I want to go to, if I want computer advice, I'll go to very specialized places. But they're really fucking small now, as well because of the information. It's sort of like Blockbuster. Blockbuster was basically a video library. It was exactly the same thing as normal libraries, but videos instead of books with the pay. with the person there helping with the information. But now downloading videos is so freaking easy. Boom, dead. Sadly, the same thing's probably going to happen to libraries with books, but it's becoming so rapidly available through. I think Amazon do that rental books, and I think iTunes and shit are getting into it soon. Which the second that becomes big, and more, a lot of people are doing that. Your, the grasp will shrink and shrink until it's not it, until basically they'll be losing money having their spot or their rental place. If that makes sense. That said, though, I, I feel like um, it's it's it, that, if it's going to happen, it's going to be way a, a long time because I feel like there's still a huge demographic of people who uh, prefer to have physical books uh, as opposed to downloaded. Sadly, I. Honestly, sadly, I don't see this happen. I don't see it happening that ba that long. I see it happening in, like I said, the next two, 20 years. The reason I say next 20 years, over here, especially, I don't know about over there, mm -hmm. we had two libraries in my city. One for this part, one for the other off, off end. My local library's recently closed down. No one was going there. Out of all the bookshops we had over here, the only bookshop that's still really going and doesn't and it hasn't closed down in my city is one that's also a place that sells toys, magazines, sweets, drinks, and has been a household brand name for years. And have their stations in and have like the rent the money to afford places in like train stations and shit as well, so they get loads of income, which means sadly. It's dwindling down, and I hate that. I really fucking hate that. It's like I hate how many DVD shops and video D game shops are closing down because of all this stuff like digital distribution, which makes it so much easier. Which, sadly, it's we're living in a world where we've got bad economy. We want to give people more jobs. We then create new technology that takes away their jobs. Hmm. <laughs> and sorry That's if I was a little yeah. soapboxish. <laughs> no, actually, we used to have a bunch of bookshops here, and we had Borders and Barnes and Nobles. Now Barnes and Nobles is like the only option now, which forces me to drive to the other one I can walk to. And we have like mm -hmm. this stupid, you know, this freaking stupid ass Christian bookstore. And I don't like Christian bookstores, but like it has like only books. Like, that's it, and it's not open on Sundays, which annoys me because like. I like, obviously, because it's a Christian bookstore, but still, it's just like, God damn it. I'm going to sound, yeah. really, I'm gonna sound See, really ignorant here, but when you say Christian bookstore, isn't there only one Christian book called the Bible? Is that literally <laughs> the only thing they sell? Because that's yeah. kind of specific. 
they, they have books like that are uh, like all these like PC like children's books that, like that are like you know like they're for like yeah. children and they're all like have biblical backgrounds and yeah. stuff. Oh, uh, so they've probably books. got Thomas the Tank books because they were made by a reverend over here. Uh, uh, Stacy, where's that? Where's that bookstore? It's in the mall, isn't it? No, it's not. That bookstore closed. That's where the new library branch is. So, ha! Library one, bookstore zero. Well, you know what? <laughs> I've been in that fucking library, and it's still got the fucking Christian book. So, you know, just because you switch tags doesn't mean shit. <laughs> which, which means, <laughs> which means, people now are spending so little money on books that they've stopped buying them, and now they. They're only just going in there and renting them from the light, which mm -hmm. means, yeah, that'll be the next thing to go, and Starbucks will be there. Well, I, well, well, well I like I said, well, like okay. I was saying, um, as I was mentioning earlier before, a bunch of people jumped in and I couldn't finish my thought. Um, the thing about it is, you're right. I mean, like I said, certainly the libraries will certainly dwindle down, but you know, I understand what you're saying about okay, you can download this book and you download this DVD, but I'm not talking, I'm not talking about w one specific. Item. I'm talking about information in general. Like, okay, I have a question. I need the answer to this question. Wikipedia. So, so, yeah, but the thing is, Wikipedia can be edited by anybody. And, you know, anybody who's anybody in society today knows. You know, especially if you're in some of high society, where if you're in, for, it used to be just colleges. Now even in high schools, because the standards have become so high in high schools. If you're in high school, college, whatever, and especially if you're in a work environment where you have to do, you know, research and reports on whatever it happens to be that you're involved in, whether you're in medicine and researching that or computers or whatever, you need uh, scholarly resources that have been peer reviewed that are certified to be accurate. And it's that's a lot harder than just Wikipedia or Googling something. You have to know how to search that stuff, where to find it, and how to get it. And that's where we come in is we know that, whereas 99% of average Joes don't. I'm gonna have to yeah. say. I'm so glad I've got this recording. I'm gonna cut off that little bit about how you know better than Wikipedia and stuff like that. Ready for the next time you read us stuff from Wikipedia? <laughs> <laughs> that's your normal that's your normal source when you give us information is Wikipedia. No, no I know, but usually if I do that it's only on something informational like a TV show or whatever. Because let's say where are you gonna find a scholarly article on a TV show? But if it were yeah. for a, a report or something more official, like if you know, if let's say again, let's say I was doing this report on libraries and how libraries are, you know, losing, uh, you know, are, you know, what's going to happen to libraries with the whole digital revolution, I would have to go to certain, you know, I would have to search Google in a certain way, go to certain sites. Yeah. I wouldn't be go to Google. I'd be more likely to go to a dog pile. But um, and you have to go to know which places to go, which sources to find, and how to get uh, certain you know peer reviewed scholarly articles. Yeah, I imagine you probably have to bing the shit out there. Yeah, yeah with Wikipedia that are considered that are sources that are considered legitimate that will be accepted yeah. by the educated community. The Wikipedia it, also has uh, sources sources to because, on, because honestly, you know, somebody's got to do that because if you know if people aren't going for scholarly articles and we're all just content to Google the Wikipedia stuff, we're all going to turn into the movie Idiocracy, and that's a frightening thought. Yeah. Sadly, yeah, I've, yeah. sadly, I've seen that, and I, I can honestly agree that's probably yeah. where the world's going to end up. But yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah. it's time. I think it's time to wrap it up as well, host. I, I just as wanted host, to say. So you I, 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 well, I just wanted to say uh, to about um, what Stacy said about uh, the borders closing down. Yeah, there was a borders near where I live uh, at a mall, uh, and the that was like the hangout place for me and my friends. We would always go to the uh, the young adult manga section and just chill. And then when they they uh, closed it down, uh, the mall just became uh, the most absolute boring place in the entire uh, city. And there's only one Barnes and Noble, and it's like miles away, and I have to pretty much do the exact same thing that she was saying. Yep. I have to go way out of my um, my way to get there. Uh, yep. Uh, all I was saying was, I think this has gone on too long, but I was going to say, as the host, Marcus, as you hadn't given us much, do you want to give us your final thoughts? What is he, Jerry Springer? Well, well I figured he's well, going to figure he's going to take us out, and he hasn't given us his thoughts. He might as well. Okay. I, I, well, I did about games, but I was actually going to um, do one more and go to uh, Mr. Neville Black Reviewer QJ since he kind of mentioned it but didn't really expound upon it. Mm -hmm. um, what are your opinions on, on this kind of stuff on digital, digital distribution and DRM for music and the future of music? Um, well, I mean, it's hard to say because I mean, I, if I were to be really blunt about it, I'd be a hypocrite because I, I download all of my music anyway. But I do <laughs> enjoy like um, 
I mean, well, that that's that's a little bit different because um, if I actually go out of my way to if it's an album that I really want to support the artist and stuff, I'll go out of my way and actually buy the CD. But it's really difficult because for me, I actually don't even know any places where um, where I can buy specifically what I want because I know places that sell music and usually the music that I want is like kind of obscure and they won't have it like uh, like at a hot topic or something. They only have like what's popular at the moment. And uh, that that's usually where it goes with a lot of places. So I would say like in my experience buying music from places, it's very unreliable because they usually don't have what I want and I usually have to go out of my way and uh, buy it online. So um, as much as I would prefer to buy the actual physical copy, um, that's that's a lot harder for me uh just b- because of my taste and i i usually have to prefer to get get it online so it's more um, of like uh a necessity i'm partnering for something but who the fuck buys music at hot topic no i'm just saying because i i go into hot topic a lot and i see uh people who are bound from public schools <laughs> pretty much <laughs> that, uh, no i i the hot topic i go to is pretty cool because i know the people who work there but i always uh, go in there and i see uh see the albums that they have and they never, they have a couple of good ones but usually it's just like the most uh popular and they they wouldn't yeah. even like probably consider well, yeah, well, that, well, that, well that's what that's why you go to a place like a barnes and noble or an fye where they have a huge wide variety of cds music in every genre you can think of that's true yeah i've been in there but they, i mean some even then sometimes they don't have what i'm looking for and stuff well then, well, well, then you go on the 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 oedipus that is itunes well, That's Amazon. what I'm saying. Yeah, I have to, I have to, uh, I have to settle for uh, the one that has pretty much everything. Go to Amazon. You can buy it through Amazon. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Don't download so, uh, yeah, this song. <laughs> You'll wind up in jail like Tommy Chong. Go and buy the CD like you know that you should, and don't download this song. Go weird out. <laughs> Good night, everybody. So yeah, the future could be very bright for digital distribution across the media platforms if done correctly. However, you know, if you look at society today as it is, it it's been shown that current society, the government, the people who make the laws that govern these new technologies and the new digital distribution – they're handcuffing a lot of what the digital distribution and the information age is supposed to be about and what it's supposed to do. Um, and unfortunately, that's partly due to some paranoias, um, some of which, which are real. I mean, I will admit, you know, software piracy, digital piracy in general is very real. But there's got to be better ways to do this than to use the absolutes that these people are using of just saying, well, okay, you're going to do this, you're going to do this piracy stuff, whom we're going to screw everybody, you know? Sadly, they kind of have to. Because look what happened with, like, the PlayStation Network outage and stuff like that. It goes to the people who hack and do the illegal piracy. They turn and say, okay, you want to stop us? We're going to take it away from everyone. Yeah, it's just ruining it for everybody. Which means you got one. Which means if one side's been all all or nothing, the other side has to, or uh, or otherwise yeah, or they gonna, win. Otherwise, no one's gonna win, and that's yeah. that's the same. That's a shame. Oh, I forgot to mention the thing which I was gonna talk about with the Amazon thing. One of the reasons I wanted to do the digital distribution. I do like the fact. Digital distribution now is helping more cult shows get extra seasons, like Arrested Development's getting a new season this month, woo, which yeah. may be out by the time this is on, because it's literally in about 11 days, so, woo, but, so mm-hmm. hopefully we, that, that works with stuff like a new season, imagine if we got like a new season of Firefly or something, I'd be fucking, I'd be over the moon. Yeah. Since you mentioned yeah. that digital distribution and just online in general has been such a great benefit to to like movies and stuff and movie makers and, and you know, audio editors, video editors, because now they have a way to, you know, get their stuff out there to show what they can do. 
And like these fan films, a lot of the fan films are ten times as good as anything Hollywood craps out. I'm sorry, but it's true. I, I, and that's what this age has brought us, unfortunately. I have to and we've kind of done this ourselves, people, if you're mm-hmm. people that are listening, of the like I said, the handicap, the handcuffing that that the government and the lawmakers have have done to us. It's because we keep trying to quote fight the power, unquote. You know, yeah. they hand they handicap us, they handcuff us, we hack. They they handcuff us more, we hack some more. And unfortunately it's a vicious cycle and I hope that the cycle can end. I hope yeah. that it'll get to a point where we won't have to worry about piracy and stuff, but we won't have to handcuff people and screw legitimate people, you know? See, I was gonna say Sadly, I was going to say it hasn't been beneficial to Hollywood. It has now. It hadn't been for a while. Because let's not yeah. forget, how many years ago was it? Like five years ago, if that, that we, we, we had the massive writer's strike because they weren't being paid over digital distribution, which killed fucking shitloads of TV shows. It killed a load of TV shows. It, it ruined a load of stuff. Like House Season 4 was like the shortest one. And you got that with a few shows, which was fucking horrible. Which means, ironically, digi- digital distribution has made it better now, but just a couple of years ago, it almost destroyed the very thing it was trying to help. Right. Well, no, what I meant by um, good for Hollywood, I didn't mean it in that respect, because, yeah, I know, it's yeah, pretty bad for that. But uh, what I meant by good for Hollywood is that if you look at a lot of the people who are popular now, a lot of the people who are in the industry now, who are, like, the front runners in the industry a lot of them got their start on the internet. And there's a lot of newer, younger talent out there on the internet. You look at them, and like I said, like a lot of the fan films and stuff, that stuff is five, ten times better than anything Hollywood has put out or has the capability of putting out. And that, to me, is a very bright future for for the indus- for industries in general, for the film industry, for the music industry, if you kind of look away from Justin Bieber. Um, I, I, I can agree you know, with that. You have all this great young talent that without the internet, you might not have known about or discovered. Yeah. I, I would say, I, I can agree with that. It also helps some bigger named things as well. Like, for example, the two films which were, which got overly hyped, and one, one of which became a, a successful because of it, well, both did. Cloverfield and Snakes on a Plane both got launched through internet hype. Yeah, digital. Uh, Cloverfield. Digital word uh, no, I'll admit Cloverfield. I think is way too overhyped. Uh, mm. Snakes on a Plane. Yeah, it's a B movie. It was hyped as a B movie. I got a B movie. Cloverfield. I was expecting this awesome fucking thing, and it's like there's so much gaps in logic here. This is overhyped. Damn you, internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but viral marketing and and. Uh, and um, digital advertising, that's the best See, way. Which, like, yeah, which, that's one of the things I'm going to say negative about the internet. And I, I've seen companies do this, and we all know we all, we all know it's possible. Hmm. But companies now, and uh, movie studios, TV shows, they found out how to manipulate the internet. Which means they do one little thing to manipulate the internet. Suddenly, their little shitty... Like, I don't know, the next Transformers film could do this or something like that. Their little shitty film suddenly gets so praised and overhyped and spread of by word of mouth all over the internet yeah. that basically they, they've taken the internet now, the film industry and TV industry, and some, some products too, but they've taken the internet and they've just turned it into a fucking giant advert. Yeah, something gets put in your face enough times, it's going to make you want to see what it's all about yep it's like if you go on something like twitter most of the hashtags nowadays are about tv shows films mm. or products like there was coca-cola hashtags going around the other day and i'm like really promoted by twitter that's usually what it'll, so, it'll say beside it oh some of them are promoted by twitter the coca one of the coca-cola ones was but one of them wasn't which was the one about over here coca-cola now puts names on bottles so i can buy a bottle with my name on it and be like, cool, uh, I got a bottle. <laughs> nice. A bottle of Mola. <laughs> yes, Mola Cola. <laughs> Coco Mola, yes. But yeah, so those are my final thoughts on it. Yeah, it could be good, but I think it's going to get 
way worse before it gets better, unfortunately. And <laughs> and it's the legitimate people, people, well, like us for the most part, that will go out and buy the games and support the developers. That you know, those of us who won't go on a rampant hacking spree or anything, we're the people that are going to get harmed by this, and that's that's an unfortunate truth. Mm. Does anyone else have any final thoughts? Yeah, well, while we're talking yeah. about soft drinks, I want to refer to Rick the Hammer as a mountain-sized Jew. Other than the fact that soft okay. like more than I, I have, since it's been advertised over here the uh, last few days, a heavily Mountain Dew. I wanted to make a Mountain Dew joke. Right. Then. Well, if nobody yeah. else has any final thoughts, then I will say thank um, you, Jeff, for uh, yeah. joining us here for Around the Pound. I've been Marcus Shadow. Until next time. See ya.